Most of us on the performing end of the camera here at KYW have been through some wild and exciting events in the world of television, which is really show business. You can't help but be a part of the unusual, and sometimes the chaotic, too. One of the most unusual adventures takes place tomorrow, because at precisely 5 o'clock in the morning, almost like the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace, a change of ownership will take place here at 1403 East 6th Street in downtown Cleveland, and with what we hope is smooth orderliness, KYW will become WKYC. I have to pause briefly before I say those call letters, and quite frankly, I don't envy the announcers who have to remember to say those call letters instead of the old during the fledgling hours tomorrow. Speaking frankly and honestly, it's been exciting and rewarding working for Westinghouse, but now we look forward to the same relationship with NBC. And uh, what was that again? W-K-Y-C. We hope you will join us in that expectation, too. With the weekend ahead, we always look forward, of course, to that important forecast, and Dick Goddard's trying his best to make it look good. Let's find out after station identification. KYW TV3, Cleveland. With Dick Goddard is brought to you by the Gulf Oil Corporation and your Gulf dealer. Good evening. Well, summer officially comes to Cleveland and Ohio at 9.56 a.m. on Monday morning. The last weekend of spring looks like perhaps the best weekend we've had this spring. I doubt very much if we'll remember uh, the last season, though, as one of the most pleasant that we have enjoyed. The wild weather is pretty well gone. Spring normally is our most turbulent season. We are now getting into a more uh, static condition, and thank goodness for that. The optimism for the weekend, but again, we are below normal in rainfall now for the month and for the year. Uh, we do need rain, but it looks like a very dry weekend, a very sunny weekend. The uh, people who own recreational areas ought to be uh, very happy over that. Our high-pressure fair weather system that has really uh, gone like a brownie halfback up here, it's zigzagging all over, is still west of Ohio, but gives promise of continuing a drop down towards the southeast. Today, because we still were on the cool east side of the high, getting winds out of Canada, some patchy cloud cover did develop, and a few showers were reported, but more than 90% of northern Ohio remain dry again today. There is still no relief in sight from this uh, continually dry period. The high pressure will predominate over the weekend as we get closer to the center of this mountain of high pressure. Our chances for clear skies increase. With that in mind, sunny skies for the weekend. It will be gradually warming. Hitting into the mid-70s tomorrow. Sunday looks like 80 degrees. Monday even warmer. Perhaps a chance of some shower activity during Monday or Tuesday. The areas of rain today that were the heaviest, uh, especially in Florida, Tampa, and West Palm Beach, both have had two inches of rain in the past six hours. This is an old line of change, a stationary cold front that shows very little movement in any direction. Hot and humid to the south, warming to the north. Our rains out in the Rocky Mountains have subsided to some degree now, but uh, there are still a few thunder showers being reported around this old line of change. This line has been here for about three days now because our mountain of high pressure has been too strong to allow these systems to move eastward. As a matter of fact, they're beginning to bunch up tonight. We've got another Pacific high moving inland across Washington and Oregon. Across Ohio at this time, skies are clear. And down at Cincinnati, per usual, they are the warmest at 70. And over at Youngstown, this too, usual, they have a cool 56. At the airport, officially 64 in Cleveland, our high today, 73. The low this morning, 50, one year ago, 83 and 59. Sunrise Saturday, 5.53, sunset will be at 9.04. We'll see how weather changed the course of world history, and we'll have the forecast, too, after this. In school, perhaps we all have heard of how weather has affected the course of world history. A giant storm sank the Spanish Armada. Hitler, of course, in his journey into Russia during World War II was stymied by the Russian winter. But by far, the most effect that weather has ever had on the uh, course of world history, studio is becoming quite crowded all of a sudden here. The biggest effect ever, as far as world history goes, including weather, was 150 years ago on this day. The date was June the 18th. The year was 1815. It was the Battle of Waterloo. Napoleon and the French armies were about 
10,000 yards from Wellington and the English armies on the morning of June 18, 1851. Napoleon had planned to attack at 6 a.m. It began to rain about that time. Napoleon had heavy artillery, cavalry drawn. He needed dry ground. Napoleon had a decision. Should he attack now and take advantage of what dry ground there was, or should he delay and wait for the sun? Napoleon decided to wait for the sun. He had a lousy meteorologist because the rain continued. Instead of attacking at 6 a.m., Napoleon delayed until noon. The heavy artillery could not make progress, and by this time, the forces of General Blucher and the Prussian army came around from the flank. Napoleon was defeated and met his Waterloo. This is his we'll last take a show. look at <laughs> talking about Napoleon and Waterloo. Well, uh, the weather isn't very exciting, Jim. I <laughs> I think we'll go to the dials now, if I can get through the crowd that is suddenly formed here. Uh, the temperature in Cleveland, let's see, I've always had trouble looking at it from the side. Yeah, there's an error of parallax, I'll do it the way I've always wanted to, 66 degrees, I can't go wrong on that. The dew point for the pilots is at 56, our relative humidity 68%, and the barometer 30.08 and is nearly steady. Our wind direction is variable now from the west. The velocities are very light. Over the weekend, we should have a variable wind averaging about 10 miles an hour, and we've had no rain to report today. The lake temperature is 54 degrees. Winds tonight, variable at 12. Tomorrow, again, variable. Uh, they will be northerly part of the time, and the lake uh, will be choppy occasionally. For tonight, generally fair skies. I feel the showers have now cleared the area. <laughs> And the overnight low will be about 50 degrees. For Saturday, for Sunday, sunny skies, golfing, picnic, swimming type weather. I won't be here Monday, so I don't have to worry about it. But it looks like a very nice weekend. High tomorrow, 75. Low tomorrow night, 50. Sunday, sunny, warmer, a very pleasant weekend at a high of 80 degrees. Let me say that on Monday, a very fine forecaster will be with you. His name is Wally Canan. Wally Canan, an accredited meteorologist from Philadelphia. He's been there seven years. <laughs> and I know you'll like him, a very nice fellow. So join uh, Wally and Pex Bad Boys starting Monday night. Thank you very much. <laughs> hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> Come well, over see. here, you young whippersnapper. <laughs> Come here, the uh, stagehands and James and all of us got together. We have, we couldn't let you go without a few <coughs> parting gifts. So if I can just wheel this in. Oh, you shouldn't have. First of all, <laughs> this is a hailstone <laughs> from Bucyrus. Bucyrus? Yes, it, it was frozen and kept by a little old lady in her freezer there just for you. <laughs> so take that with you before it melts. I don't know what to say, Pat. Here's a special gift. I'll hold that for you. Would you hold that, Jim? It'll take him five it's... minutes to sign off this thank you business. <laughs> this is a special gift from the stagehands. You may open it. You know, I've been uh, donating for these going away gifts for four years now, and I hadn't received anything up until now. I was kind of worried about Well, I thought this was only fair. Then it's Chuck. You just wait and see. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, I've always wanted more chalk <laughs> and snow. <laughs> there you are, Greener. Waited a long time for that. You guys wanted to give me a I still go on, you know, you're through. <laughs> well, I'll be right. In case you're tuned in, this isn't the Soupy Sales Show. <laughs> And, uh, How did you like working for NBC? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, here's a final gee, a year's supply of chalk. From the well, I tell you, Wally Kinnan is going to have three big problems here. The first one is going to be Lake Erie, and the other two are going to be Jim Grainer and Pat Murray. <laughs> is there anything you want to say, Whitey? <laughs> I don't need this for my hair, but I will say in all seriousness, Dick said there was no precipitation today, but his dials don't take into consideration the... Tons of tears by all these females that have been shed, and now, as he's leaving, I'm turning them over to you. If you can take care of them, he's well, got plenty. Our forecast is for uh, sunny skies and pleasant winds aloft, wherever Thank you, you may go. Very much. Good luck to and you. And take your cumulus you. clouds to Philadelphia with you. <laughs> Not too much. Thank you. The weather with Dick Goddard, which bears the seal of approval of the American Meteorological Society, was brought to you tonight by the Gulf Oil Corporation and your golf dealer.
No, don't. Well, the way things are going, it looks like it will be. <laughs> it looks like we'll all be fired. It looks like it will be an Indian summer, and here's Jim Grainer. It's six straight for the Cleveland Indians tonight. They've taken over third place and gained a full game on the league. Because of this, the commercial. The commercial is over, but the party here is still going on. That's it. Good night. <laughs> The Sports with Jim Grainer was brought to you by Newport Filter Cigarettes. Newport tastes fresher and tastes better than any other menthol cigarette. This has been Eyewitness News 11 p.m. Report with Pat Murray, Dick Goddard, and Jim Grainer. These programs, portions of which are on film and videotape, are produced by KYW-TV News, which is solely responsible for their content. It's a matter of fact and opinion. This is a television editorial by Fred Walker, General Manager of KYW-TV. It's always easy to say hello, but so hard to say goodbye. However, our time for farewell has come. As you know, KYW Radio and TV are moving to Philadelphia as of tomorrow. Taking our place will be NBC Radio and TV. We've thoroughly enjoyed the past nine years. During this period, we did our very best to present an attractive diet of programs designed to meet with your approval and to serve the needs of this community. At the same time, we felt we had a responsibility to comment on local and state issues through these editorials. Some of you agreed with us, others did not. In any event, your response was most gratifying. We feel that the years ahead will be exciting ones for Cleveland. Aren't with Cleveland State University, Erie View, and other projects underway, with freeways about to be completed, with rapid transit on the verge of expansion, with a new awareness of local problems and ways to solve them. We're convinced that Cleveland is on the threshold of a shining new era. We're going to miss Cleveland and our many friends. It's a wonderful place in which to live and work. As we leave, we'd like to express our thanks to all of you for your interest, your loyal support, and your generous friendship. From Westinghouse Broadcasting, our sincere wish to you for a very bright and rewarding future, and goodbye. Speaking for the station was Fred Walker, General Manager of KYW-TV. The preceding editorial was presented as a public service. This station welcomes comments on its editorial opinions and recognizes its obligation to present over these facilities the opposing view of responsible spokesmen in order to achieve a balanced presentation on this issue. For copies of this television editorial, write to KYW-TV, Cleveland 44114. The following is a KYW-TV presentation. KYW-FM is owned and operated by the Westinghouse Broadcasting Company by authority of the Federal Communications Commission. KYW-FM transmits music transcribed on a frequency of 105.7 megacycles. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Carol Osborne, the Sisters of Notre Dame, and the Catholic Diocese of Cleveland have presented tonight's Credo. Credo is a KYW-TV public affairs presentation. This was a videotape recording. For music and news all night long, switch over to KYW Radio, 1100 on your dial for The Jay Lawrence Show. This is Westinghouse Television. Station KYW-TV, Channel 3 in Cleveland, Ohio, with studios located at 1403 East 6th Street. KYW-TV is owned and operated by Westinghouse Broadcasting Company. And as a subscriber in good standing to the NAB television code, is privileged to display the seal of good practice. Our programs may not be used for any purpose except exhibition at their time of broadcast, on receivers of the type ordinarily used for home reception in places where no admission, cover, or mechanical operating charges are made.